welcome back. Thank you very much for stopping by. I'm um, going to make a little meal here today and we're going to use the Weber kettle and uh, we're going to do country pork ribs, country spare ribs, whatever they might be called in your area. Uh, not, I'm not a butcher so I'm not sure exactly where in the rib area they come from. A lot of times what they have is if you look down here one end will have a bone in it and the rest of it will be all the meat. So not exactly sure where that comes from. We're going to use some um, Famous Dave's rib rub uh, and then later, I'm um, sorry, later on we're going to barbecue sauce them with whatever I have in the house. It's usually Sweet Baby Rays or Jack Daniels. And to um, kind of um, steam it in the um, Dutch oven, we'll use these ingredients and mix them up in no certain amounts. I just glug, 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 pour it in. And what will happen is that will go in the bottom of our Dutch oven. And then uh, I take a lid and remove the knob and I'll crumple this foil up and make a ring that goes around the outside edge so that this sits up off the juices and then all the ribs go on top of here. Um, I was mentioning the rub earlier. The rub, I will put that on and I believe what I'm going to try to do is sear them. I'm, I, I'm toying with maybe not. But uh, either way, it's going to have this rub on it. So we'll uh, get the going here and then we'll bring it back. All right, welcome back. Uh, just to show you very quickly, red wine vinegar. That's what I got in there. That's about how much that is. I don't. There's a line here. What is it? Four. What the hell? Oh, four ounces. All right. Uh, there's no real measuring, so I figured I, I, I should just show you what I do. Uh, let me just throw a bunch of this. Lee and Parents. What's this here sauce? Worcestershire sauce. And then what we have here? P.F. Chang soy sauce. Sometimes I throw some hoisin sauce in. It's just for humidity, is all this is. Uh, and I'm not going to taste it. I always throw a little bit of water in it. And that should be enough to cover the bottom and keep it steaming. All right. We'll see you then. All right. Welcome back. So I got the country spare ribs, country pork ribs out. And uh, better able to explain what the heck I'm looking at. That looks like the baby back right there. All right, then look at this one. This one has some kind of cartilage right in there, <clears throat> but uh, they, they tend to be different. Looking, some have the bone, some don't, some have some cartilage. But I did notice this, I usually don't get this, that it's got this fat cap here, so I want to, uh, I like the flavor of it, but I want the rub to be able to get in there, so I'll cut that up a little bit. And I'm not worried about that one. Maybe this one we gotta do a little cutting. Get down to the meat so the rub gets in there. And let's see, yeah, these are alright. Here's one. This one looks alright. That one looks alright. And uh, a lot of times I'll get a cookie sheet and do the rubbing, but I'm not doing that. I'm going to use this kettle here. So we'll take some of uh, Dave's famous, famous Dave. They're from around this area. Oh, not. It says Minnesota. I guess he's from around this area and gets somebody in Minnesota to do it. Hey, what else? I'm pretty sure he is around this area. Alright, I will throw some rub on it. And we're going to sear them in this uh, cast iron kettle. Dutch oven. And we'll just rub it around so that'll be a little extra flavor on the bottom. Throw a little oil in there and get them searing up. So that's what I'm doing. I'm um, going to get these babies uh, all... Uh, good and seasoned up and then we'll get the fire started let these sit go to room temperature we'll see you soon all right everybody welcome back uh it's gonna be raining off and on all day today in fact we're supposed to have like three or four days in a row of rain constantly it seems like so i didn't want to do the chimney starter um i got the grill up on the porch i didn't want to have to run out in the rain to get the stuff so we're gonna take some paper towel that i have soaked with oil underneath the coals and those coals are from uh, the last cup. Still have plenty of life left in them. So we're going to ignite the paper towel, soak with oil, and uh, try to get those coals started. So we'll bring it back. All right, welcome back. Now we're going to uh, do a little searing. We got some oil in here and all the uh, rub that was left over. 
and we're just gonna get, get them in there, probably in batches, try to get them seared up. That should only take five minutes or so, I would think. Pretty good and hot in that cast iron there. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sear all these off and then we'll get set up to uh, put them in the Dutch oven. And by that time the coal should be down a little bit and uh, we'll get a good consistent lower heat and uh, see you then. All right, here we are now. We're searing them off. I got three sides and this is the fourth side here. And uh, they're looking really good, I'll tell you what. Really, really good. I can't wait to try these. Just getting some nice caramelization on them, a little searing. That looks pretty good. So we got four more, and then uh, we'll be ready to um, do them in the Dutch oven. Uh, kind of knock the temperature down, hopefully a little bit, because these coals should be dimming, like I said before. And uh, we'll bring you back when something exciting happens. the um, last four seared on all four sides they are looking wonderful and you would not believe the smell so we're gonna take these and put them on a plate over here and uh, we'll get ready to do uh, the next part of our recipe in the Dutch oven so you see a lot of good stuff down there on the bottom lots of good stuff. So what we're going to do, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to scrape some of that up a little bit. I want to be a little careful with our cast iron. All right, and now we're going to add our humidifying mixture. And that should help us to get all that stuff off the bottom and get it incorporated into the Juice here. We're going to use to humidify the ribs as we cook. And it was a uh, red wine vinegar, not apple cider vinegar. I think I made a mistake earlier on the describing the vinegar. Uh, I picked up the wrong one out of the cabinet. They kind of look alike. And that's how we do that part of it. Now, we will show you the aluminum foil deal there. So, to keep them off the bottom, we place these in. And we'll tap them down. There we go. So the ribs aren't sitting in the juice. We don't want that. And then we take our lid and put it like a so. Come on. Ouch. That's hot. And then we'll place our ribs on top of there. I'm going to try to get them. I like to get rounder ones on the outside. There we go. That's one that will conform to the outside. And there is one. And there is one. And look, see that burn go right behind in there. Perfect. I'll move this one out of the way. Look so. And now we gotta do a little jigsaw puzzling. We only have one or two that have to sit on the top. Which is just fine. And hmm. Let's try putting that one there. And take one of these. And try jamming that in there. Oh, that's beautiful. Perfect. And then we'll have one that has to sit on top. No big deal. All right. And uh, I don't know, an hour, probably, maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours, I don't know. We'll uh, get the thermometer and then uh, we'll know whether they're done or not. But that's how we're gonna let it go for a little while. We'll get the lid. Put that on top, and that should be that. There you are. See you then. All right, welcome back. 
Um, I just uh, took the lid off earlier to check on them, and they are looking very good. I uh, did temperature check, and they're going anywhere from uh, 160 to I have a couple that are at 190. So they are ready to go. So we're going to put some barbecue sauce on. And uh, use the brush and splatter around a little bit. That'll be that. So uh, shortly we'll be bringing it back to taste these. I'm going to make up some macaroni and cheese. My boy wants that. And uh, we'll see you then. All right, welcome back. Here it is, the taste test. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, they turned out really good. My first time doing it on a video, but I've done it several times before. Um, so we take a look at what's in the pot here. What I did was I uh, cut a little bit off of this one in order to uh, do the taste test. It's a little early for me to eat dinner, um, but I cut it with this butter. It just went right through. It's going to be awesome. So let me get to tasting. I don't see anything wrong with it at all. It's delicious. Um, and there's like, it seems like on different ones you get a different texture or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's really good. Oh. Mrs. Lumberjack made macaroni and cheese and peas. And that's what we're eating tonight. So um, thanks a lot for watching. And we'll see you next time. Peace.